guys, so today we're going to do a pretty basic hack on the standard Pentel pocket brush. Most of you are familiar with this. Um, I have one here that clearly demonstrates the problem I'm trying to solve today in that it comes with a very small ink cartridge. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do an eyedropper conversion with a Pentel pocket brush. Now, those of you who are familiar with fountain pens may also be familiar with this technique. So um, for the purposes of demonstration, we're going to start with a brand new Pentel pocket brush. And it does have the ink cartridges, which I will squirrel away, because I always need those. I picked this up on Amazon when these were going for like $2 each, which is crazy. If you guys are interested in art deals, you need to follow my Twitter because anytime I come across one, I share it. So for this conversion, you're going to need your Pentel pocket brush, your ink. I'm using fountain pen ink. I'm using platinum carbon black ink because I know it won't clog my pen. I also got that on Amazon. You're going to need silicon grease, silicon grease, which again, you can get on Amazon, an eyedropper. I'll go ahead and put my empty away. And if you missed any step, or if you need help with any step, head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com. Sorry if you can hear my cat fussing. He's on my lap. He will not move. Um, you can head on over to natosoup.blogspot.com for more information. So this is a brand new Pentel pocket brush. It does not need to be cleaned. But if you are doing a conversion on irregular, has been used before, Pentel pocket brush, you can again head on over to my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com by clicking here. Uh, you can find out how to clean your nib, your brush nib out. It's very, very simple. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna unscrew this. This works even better if you have some sort of a rubber gasket. So for those of you who wear braces and have those orthodontic rubber bands, you're in luck because that can be used as a gasket. Unfortunately, I do not have any. And I had a friend who was gonna mail me some cause she's, she's got some lying around um, and that hasn't happened. And I can't really postpone this post anymore. You can also head on over to your hardware store and pick up some gaskets. So you want, so if your silicon grease is brand new, you're going to need to open it. And like I said, I have a cat completely hogging my lap with his claws dug deep into my thigh. Um, he just knocked over my keyboard. He's awesome. Making it a little difficult for me to grab a pair of scissors, but scissors I shall grab. Let me pick up said keyboard. Got to find a better place for that. It's just that kind of morning today, guys. And we're going to go ahead and nip off the tip of our silicon grease. And we're going to go ahead and apply this around our... And I'm sorry if my camera gets in the way. Like I said, it's been that kind of morning. But I want to make sure that everybody can follow along. And we're just going to smear the grease into the threads with our fingertip. So if you happen to have some paper towels handy, you're in better shape than I am because I do not. I do not want to leave this on your hands. So the next step is to go ahead and use your eyedropper to fill this compartment. I wonder if I should do silicon grease on that as well. Actually, you know what? I will. I'll be right back. All right. 
So we're going to go ahead and apply the same grease to a clean brand new Q-tip, not one that's covered in your earwax. Trying so hard to use my phone one-handed to take photos. It just is not, I'm not good at it. All right, so we're gonna use that to carefully apply some of that grease on the inside threads and then wipe away the excess. And this is going to help make this a little more airtight and liquid tight. And then we're gonna go ahead and use our eyedropper. And it's a little difficult to see because it is black on black. Where the silicon touched my ink. I'm just going to discard that ink because I don't want to have to deal with that. And we're going to screw the two halves together. And as you can see, we have some grease hanging outside the edges. So, if you have a paper towel, again, you're a step ahead of me. I am completely out of them in this apartment. So, I'm very delicately wiping away the grease with my finger. And we're going to store this upside down and we're going to check back on this soon. Want to give the ink a chance to flow into the nib and see if it'll work. Okay guys, so our ink has had a chance to almost fully permeate to the tip of the nib. I'm just looking for, yes, a fresh sheet of scratch paper just finish the job. So that's with the Platinum Carbon ink. And it dries very fast. It's a little gray, but that's okay. And it should be waterproof once fully dry. If you're starting with a fresh or a clean brush pen, then you can put in whatever color you want. And to prevent me from opening this up when it starts to go dry and living in a land of regret as little bits of ink spill all oh, that's gonna be too big let's try it like this i made a handy little let's see if that'll work maybe it will not okay all right so i did not make a handy tag i am not as awesome as i thought so i'm going to use if i can find it i'm going to use an opaque i don't want to use a chalk writer but I'm gonna use an opaque pen, an opaque permanent pen, to write on the body that this is a dropper conversion. Let's see, graphic is supposed to be permanent. We'll see about that. All right, guys, so that is how you uh, increase your uh, ink capacity for a Pentel pocket brush. I would not recommend this for heavy travel just because it, there is a possibility for it to leak, but this way you can fill it with the ink of your choice so long as the ink of your choice does not include shellac, so that's going to X out all India inks for you and does not include um, acrylic, but you could, if you wanted to, use Sumi ink, I think, because it shouldn't matter if there's pigment particles because it shouldn't clog up the brush. If it does clog up the brush though, there are very easy ways to clean it and restore your brush to almost brand new. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I hope I showed you guys something new, something interesting, maybe give you new life to your Pentel pocket brush. This will work on most pins that have a cartridge feed like this and have a solid barrel with no holes in it. 
and it is a great way to um, in either utilize inks that you all, oh, that's gonna smear. I'm gonna have to write that with something better. Uh, utilize inks that you already own, or um, try something new in your Pentel pocket brush. You could use a, um, a water soluble ink and you could use it for ink washes if you wanted to. You know, it's always nice to repurpose things that we've got laying around. So if you enjoyed this tutorial, if you would like to see more, make sure you leave a like. If you've got any questions, suggestions, or comments, please leave me a comment below, but do try to be kind. I do read my comments, um, so don't, please don't, just say something mean just to be mean. Um, if you really enjoyed this video, take a moment to share it on your social network, share it with your friends, your family, your fellow artists who might enjoy an easy and inexpensive little hack like this. Um, head on over to the blog because we're gonna talk about converters in addition to this sort of um, conversion. So if you're curious as to whether or not any converters will work with your Pentel pocket brush, I asked my friend and JetPens employee, Heidi Black, and she helped me out. So you should check that out if you're interested. Um, if you would like to see more like this, remember to subscribe. I do this sort of content all the time, uh, at least twice a week. And if you would like to help me make more content like this, there are a couple of ways um, first, if you show your support by signal boosting my content, that encourages me and it helps me grow my audience. So I am more than willing to put the time in to make these sort of tutorials to help people out. These do take up time, money, and resources. They do rely on a pretty extensive um, range of art supply knowledge. So if you would like to help me out, you can help support me financially by checking out um, my shop at natosoup.com slash products or my gumroad at gumroad.com slash natosoup. You can purchase something from me at a convention or you can join my community of art nerds on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. I hope you get hacking. I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye art nerds. Hey guys, so earlier I mentioned doing an eyedropper conversion on a Pentel pocket brush. And this is the one that I converted. And uh, I also mentioned doing a post on the blog um, about eyedropper conversions and um, actual converters for fountain pens being used for Pentel pocket brushes. And you guys can check that out at natosoup.com slash blog, I mean, ah, uh, sorry, blogspot.com, dang it, natosoup.blogspot.com, there we go, woo, got it. So um, I've got another one of those cheap uh, Pentel pocket brushes, uh, that, not that they are always cheap, but I paid $2 for this. And the reason I had mentioned converters earlier is I wanted to try filling a Pentel pocket brush with a different color ink. In this instance, we're gonna use Dr. P.H. Martin's Radiant Concentrated Watercolor. This is an ink-based watercolor. It is not light fast, but it is a beautiful color. And we're going to use a brand new, never used, never sullied, Pentel pocket brush, and we're gonna do an ink drop conversion on it. And the same as with the black conversion, you are going to want some silicon grease, and that's gonna seal this from leaking. And if you have something to use as a gasket, I recommend that as well. And we're going to go ahead, oh, you're also gonna want an eyedropper. I know I have one floating around, but since I don't see it, I'll grab a fresh one. Ta-da! Always super handy to have those in your studio. Highly recommend. Um, so we're going to use silicone grease, silicone grease that we got on Amazon. And you can check my description for links to all of these resources. We're going to use this on the threads of both ends for a nice tight seal. Just gonna mush it in there. And we're gonna apply some on the inside as well. You don't need to apply too much because it will, um, 
it will kind of, kind of goosh out. We might not actually need an eyedropper because one of the bonuses of concentrated radiant watercolor is it has its own eyedropper. All right, so give this a nice shake. This is cherry red. I happen to have a duplicate of this, so I thought, why not? Because for an eyedropper conversion, you're going to be filling the body of the pen with ink. In this case, watercolor. Now, I don't necessarily recommend you use this in your fountain pen um, because we do not know if it will have an adverse effect. But the Pentel pocket brush should be able to take it. And if not, I have a tutorial again on the blog on how to clean out your Pentel pocket brush and pretty much restore it to brand new. So we have filled the body with cherry red watercolor. And this is going to be a very water soluble ink, but it should be really fun to play with. And now we're going to screw our um, perfect, no, no gooshing, no overlap, screw our pen back and I need to remember to take some photos because I know the readers are going to want to know this and we're going to cap this and we're going to store it brush side down. I'm going to go ahead and also recap everything. I don't like leaving things uncapped in my studio because I have a cat and we're going to label this. And I'm using a deco color. These are oil based and it should dry permanent. And it actually didn't use as much watercolor as I thought it would. Cherry red. Eyedropper. And by labeling this, you should hopefully not accidentally unscrew it, trying to refill it and getting get ink all over you. That would be terrible, right? That would, you'd blame me, wouldn't you? And I'm gonna go ahead and throw these carts in my pen drawer. And I'm gonna store this, like I said, upside down so the ink can reach the brush and I'll check in with you guys in a few minutes when that has had a chance to sort of go into the brush. All right guys so as you can see the ink has started to flow to the tip and I do feel the need to tell you guys that yes you can do this sort of technique with a watercolor or a water brush. Um, I just happen to have several Pentel pocket brushes that I purchased from Amazon. So I thought it would be a fun hack for those of you who maybe have one laying around and you don't really use it or you are more comfortable with this than you are with this. I mean, there is a substantial size difference or you have room for this, but not for this. So I hope you guys enjoyed my tutorials on eyedropper conversions for the Pentel pocket brush. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. Just try to remember to be civil. I'm a person and I do check my comments and I do actually reply to them when I, when I can. Um, so I know some of you have uh, expressed surprise that I respond to the comments, but I do read them and I do appreciate them. So uh, keep them coming and let me know what you guys think. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit like that lets YouTube know that you want more content want more content like this for my mouth just started like overloading um and uh, if you enjoy this sort of content please remember to subscribe i do all sorts of art goodies art nerdiness on this channel twice a week so if that sounds like your jam 
make sure you subscribe. If you would like more content like this, head on over to the blog at natosoup.blogspot.com. Um, I try to cover similar, but not exactly the same things over there. And I do tend to go much more in depth. So uh, the blog might be the place to be if you're interested in that sort of art and nerdiness shenanigans. Um, if you would like to help support this blog, there are a, I mean, this, this channel, this content, these tutorials, there are a number of ways you can do that. You can go ahead and hit share with the social sharing buttons below the video, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, all of those are great. Your good word means a lot to me and um, it means more to your friends than me just trying to promote my own stuff. So if you could take a moment to do that, I would be hugely appreciative. Um, I do actually see when that happens and it warms my heart and inspires me to make more. So if you enjoy this sort of content, that is definitely something you should consider doing for me. If you, um, really sorry losing track of myself today if you really enjoy this sort of content you can help fund more content like this by checking out my shops my digital assets are sold on gumroad.com slash natosoup that includes mini comics coloring pages color along with me stuff and comics or you can buy physical copies of comics mini comics and loads more amazing things over at natosoup.com slash products and i am working to get the shop super duper updated because my con season just ended and it's time to make some money for Christmas. So if you guys like what I do, those are great ways to support it. If you want to support this directly, you can head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup and join my community of art nerds because my art nerds get early access to these videos. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you again really soon. Bye.